two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Boris and Dave on Delusions of Grandeur. Um, where we are uh, coming back after a, a week's reprieve uh, due to the uh, excessive hours that we uh, used up last month. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I figured we'd go back and uh, and continue our uh, films that have to do with Psycho. Um, and uh, the first one that um, we did not cover as of yet uh, was a film from 1987, and it was made for TV. Um, at the uh, uh, time, it evidently first premiered as part of NBC Monday Night at the Movies on July 5th, 1987. Um, and it continues after the events of the original Psycho film as it ignores the other sequels. So, um, just to get a basic uh, rundown of the movie. Um, I'm going to go and tell uh, you exactly what uh, IMDb says about the film. A mentally disturbed man who roomed with the late Norman Bates at the state lunatic asylum inherits the legendary Bates Motel after the death of Norman and tries to fix it up to make it a, respect a, a respectable business. So, um, let us go into our first thoughts of this one. <laughs> now, oh. I, I, I happen to have it a couple of to uh, 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 times. I have it on a Psycho uh, collection from the UK, but I also... Uh, it's my fiance's co uh, copy. She's got uh, Psycho 2, 3, and 4, along with Bates Motel um, wow. connected to, to it all on one disc. So um, I, have it uh, I have it here about her copy so that I didn't have to go dig mine out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, what are your thoughts on this uh, particular film? I mean... Uh, it, it it is the first adaptation. Well, first, what is it? Sequel that has nothing. Uh, it has nothing to do with Anthony per uh, uh, Perkins. Doesn't. Well, it does, and it doesn't. It, it has nothing to, uh, it, to do with the actor of uh, uh, of mm. Anthony Perkins, but it does have something to do with Norman Bates. Yeah. <laughs> well, I must say. Uh, I was uh, uh, very surprised by how much humor and comedy there was in this movie. I mean, uh, I, when I started to watch it, I expected it to be a horror movie. I mean, it's supposed to be a part of the Psycho universe. <laughs> so, yeah, I was definitely surprised to see how much humor they put in this movie. But uh, I have to say I enjoyed it a lot. I uh, I didn't expect to have so much laugh with it, but it was definitely good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, I think it's a, it was a very creative idea to put uh, so much humor into a psycho story, but. Uh, uh, yeah, at the same time, it uh, surprisingly makes sense. I mean, when you think about it, in, in the first movie, there was actually nothing paranormal going on. It, uh, it takes place in a universe like ours, so it's uh, uh, not really impossible for things to go on this way. I mean, when... Uh, there is no more psycho killer at the Bates Motel. It, uh, uh, it's not impossible that some whacked out things like this start happening there. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
the film is directed by Richard Rothstein, um, and uh, um, just taking a look here, uh, 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 here apparently he is. Okay, so other than a, a couple of episodes of The Hitchhiker, this is his one and only um, directorial uh, film. Uh, but he was a writer um, on, I guess, a, a film called Human Experiments in 1979, a gift of uh, 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 one. Uh, uh, he wrote Universal Soldier. He wrote universe, uh, the characters for uh, the Universal uh, the Return, and I guess they were based on uh, the other films that have to do with Universal Soldier were. Um, and I guess he's very much the creator of the uh, the Hitchhiker uh, anthology series that uh, that was uh, uh, in the eighties as well. So. Um, but, um, the film stars Bud Court, Laura Pet uh, Lori Petty, Moses Gunn, Greg Henry, young, a uh, very young J uh, Jason Bateman, and Carrie K uh, Keen. Um, so, um, I first saw this film maybe a couple years ago, and I first heard about it from a friend of my, uh, mine that, uh, that lives here in Milwaukee, and he's qu quite a collector of VHS stuff. So, uh, so, uh, so um, he's an older man than I am, and he, he lo loves his films. And he, every time I would work with him at my mom's, beyond, uh, 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 my mom's resale shop that, uh, that I kind of helped her run for quite a few years. He would uh, come and tell me, have you heard of this film? Have you heard of this film? Well, one of, it, it was one of these times he actually told uh, told me about, about it. And then eventually I picked up a copy and and watched it with, uh, with uh, my fiance, I think, for the first time. And I enjoyed it. Um, it was a different uh, take, uh, uh, take to the um, psycho universe, so to speak, because uh, first you don't have Anthony Perkins anywhere in it. You have him actually dying in the film. So, mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's a little bit different. And somebody, uh, somebody else takes over, you know, ownership. So, and, uh, you do get kind of a supernatural haunting in the film, but much of the haunting that we see in here is mostly done by someone trying to scare. So, yeah, pretty much <laughs> uh, a Scooby Doo scenario, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> but what do we think about the character that Bud Court? Uh, portrays here. His name, I believe, is Alex... Alex West. Alex West. Uh, what do you think about it, uh, him uh, when we first um, when we first are introduced to him? Well, when we were originally introduced to him uh, was uh, when he was a kid, when we found out that he uh, killed his abusive stepfather. Well, uh, I must say at that point I really didn't expect the story to uh, uh, become so humorous later on. It seemed. Uh, well, uh, yeah. It seemed have you ever serious. Seen, uh, have you ever seen a film t uh, uh, told partially through a flashback before like this? Uh, well, probably yes. Actually, Psycho Four is told partially through flashbacks. Okay, um, but what do you think about this? Uh, these flashback scenes in the very beginning here. 
Well, they, they were actually quite uh, emotionally impacted and uh, quite sad. Like I said, after those things, I really didn't expect uh, the story to take the route uh, it eventually did. I mean, when Alex's backstory was revealed, I immediately felt sorry for the character actually so much that I... Uh, didn't understand why he had to uh, why he had to spend uh, that much time at uh, this mental facility. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's rather understandable why he did what he did. Uh, his stepfather seemed to be extremely abusive, and what he did was an act of self defense. So I didn't think he deserved to be in a, a mental hospital for so many years. Yeah, well, that was much, very much the case for a lot of um, cases like his, um, especially here, here in the, uh, the United States. I mean, if you didn't have any family that you could live with, you became a ward of the state. So. Um, the state took care of you, uh, 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 care of you, and they put you where they could fit you. And sometimes it, it, it was often in a boarding house. Sometimes it, it, it was in a mental hospital. And unfortunately, because of his circumstances, because he ended up. Uh, did you hear 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 what he did to his father? He 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 put he put his body in a dry cleaning. Uh, uh, yeah, well, the stepfather used to uh, lock him up in that uh, dry cleaner, and he eventually did the same to him and turned the machine on. <laughs> I actually think that, uh, well, it, it was an act of self-defense, but at the same time, it's poetic justice, to be honest. Uh, that guy deserved it. <laughs> I guess, but uh, but, uh, but uh, regardless, uh, it was because he was killed um, by him uh, 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 is why he was locked up. Um, because no matter whether it was justice or not, it was a wrong. And um, according to at least the public concern, you know, I mean, uh, when you kill some uh, someone, no matter whether you think it's justice or uh, not, it's wrong. So, uh, so well, he, uh, he 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 was put away uh, uh, away, and probably it takes a while for the public uh, to um. To probably come to an understanding that, uh, that okay, this person ha ha has been well behaved for like man uh, many years. Okay, now we can release them to public society. You yeah, know, but uh, what he did wasn't even only justice; it was uh, self-defense. Well, in in the day and age of uh, criminology. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure at uh, this point in t uh, time, they weren't seeing it as self-defense. It was pure and out murder. He planned it. He, 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 he uh, no matter whether his father had done him uh, wrong or not, he and uh, he plotted and he murdered his father. So it Ugh. was not uh, self-defense according to the public. So. Um, I, I can see your point, though. Uh, it's it, it, I would have taken it as self defense, but uh, but for his safety, he he yeah. should should not have been locked up per se. As a, he, well, yeah, and we should also take into account that he was a little boy when he did that. Uh, so I agree. But he also probably didn't have a whole lot of family at that uh, point. Yeah, 
it was said that his mother died, that that was why he was left with that stepfather. And, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly what they said about siblings, either that there weren't any, or did they maybe say that there was some sibling but died. I can't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, there was a doctor, um, a Dr. Goodman, who evidently had him meet um, Norman Bates. Mm -hmm. And they became friends, I guess, in a, a sense, up until his departure from this world. Oh, yeah. Which, as I sa as said before, this sequel kind of ignores... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. The previous three films that we have discussed <laughs> yeah, well, uh, as far as I uh, understood, uh, by the time that this movie was made, uh, Psycho 4 did not exist yet, but Psycho 2 and Psycho 3 did, and uh, this movie was made as if they didn't exist. Uh, Correct. And... Uh... We get a story <coughs> where we now have Alex West, a grown man, and he is now told that he has been willed the property of Norman Bates, and it's kind of a funny will, uh, will uh, <laughs> is speaking, because... Uh, Evidently, he leaves a chicken to an old lady. <laughs> a turkey. <laughs> <coughs> and his 45s to someone. And it was a, a really kind of comical, you know. Uh, uh, just how, how, what Norman thought was, you know, his possessions. Yeah, he seemed to have a sense of humor, even with the words of death. <laughs> and uh, we get a very heartfelt, um, what is it, reading from scripture. Um, and you know what I noticed throughout this film? There were like several different funerals. I, 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 it, it's like, ooh, I, I don't remember a film where I've seen more than one uh, funeral in it as much as the, uh, the funerals that we saw because oh, interesting point. I didn't think about it <laughs> at least those that you and I have watched <laughs> yeah there was uh, the funeral of Norman in this movie then uh, of his mother when they found uh, her body which was uh, kind of a strange and scene in a way because uh, Yes. And I don't think we saw a, a funeral for, I guess, uh, Jake. Uh, yeah, I think, we, I think we didn't. I'm not sure, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was just a skeleton with a ring uh, that, that evidently... Evidently, that, that was Norman's father uh, that uh, we have somewhat been alluded to, to as who he was and we get a little bit more of a story in a background to norman's mother uh in this uh, uh sequel as well because apparently um she, uh, uh, norman's mother was made to go down to pleasure the guests while the step uh, while the father was around uh, wait, they did mention something I don't remember for sure now. Did they say that or did they say that the father was the one who was uh, having sex with guests? I think it was and, kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm, 
I'm not sure. I, for some reason, I uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> well, ultimately, one of them was sleeping around, and the other uh, and Norman's mother uh, apparently may have killed the father, and. Norman having possibly seen the, uh, 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 this is also possibly why he became a killer too. Um, mm. And how his mother treated him after um, after uh, after his father went missing or uh, got killed or whatnot. But w we get Alex um taking a bus trip um, and uh, he's unsure of himself. He is kind of a nervous Nelly of a person. <laughs> uh, so when he uh, is trying to look around uh, uh, to where the, bu uh, to take the bus, he runs into a couple of bums and one of them mistakes is uh, his er ash urns of uh, Norman as a drink. <laughs> oh, oh my god that was uh, morbidly hilarious <laughs> you're 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 keeping the sake to yourself uh, yeah he was like no that's not sake that's Norman <laughs> and this guy didn't even seem to understand what he meant <laughs> well in any case he takes the bus and it uh, gets off in Fairville. Fairville, was it? Yeah, Fairville, because uh, that's uh, that's where uh, that's where the Bates Motel is. Um, it's in Fairville, and uh, we get our first moment where we see Moses Gunn uh, uh, show, uh, show up as a, a character who drives Alex uh, to the motel, but he tells him, um, you know, somewhat of the story is, uh, of uh, what he's heard, heard that Nor uh, uh, Norman Bates' mother is still haunting the house and <laughs> stuff like that. What do you think about uh, um, that ca a ca a character? Well, he was uh, pretty Henry, cool, actually. Henry Watson was his name. Yes, yes. He was uh, pretty cool, actually. There were uh, quite several funny moments with him. For example, when uh, they were uh, when they were evicting him from his original home, and he was unwilling to go, and then those people outside. Uh, said something like he might be dangerous but when alex walked in uh, he turned oh, out oh yeah he, uh, he walked in like there was nothing happening he was like uh, <laughs> uh, 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 he, he was like what do you mean uh, don't listen to uh, uh, to the norman come on in norman <laughs> well uh, uh don't listen to them alex <laughs> come on in <laughs> yeah that was pretty I, I, good. I, I was trying to psych you out to see if you re realized uh, who was in here. Of course, <laughs> of course Norman, uh, Norman has already passed on, or or, or so we th uh, or so we are to believe. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's interesting, especially in that scene, how sometimes uh, it, uh, at least uh, uh, to me personally, it made me think of how things, uh, even in real life, often uh, are the way they seem. And uh, 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 people hear one thing and they immediately jump to conclusions and assume it's... Uh, the things are the way they are told when uh, there is always another side of the story like in this case there were those people trying to evict the guy and they said he was dangerous when evidently there was another side to the story which well in this case maybe it wasn't uh, uh, too 
much of a big deal, but there are uh, situations like that in real life and sometimes it's worth thinking maybe things really aren't the way they seem. Maybe I should double check it before I jump to conclusions. In any case, uh, Henry brings him to the uh, boarded up doors of the Bates Motel. And he tells them that, uh, that, uh, that they boarded them uh, them up, and he's uh, he, he's somewhat curious about why uh, why you know why he wa uh, he wants to stay uh, stay there you know of all places you know because uh, cause apparently it's got a history. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he ends up going out, getting some groceries, and he comes back and realizes it's not just him. He's got a chicken problem, too. <laughs> Did you want to tell us about the chicken problem? <laughs> yes, that was one part I found really funny. So before that happens, there is a moment when we see a person in a chicken costume and now it turns out that that person actually li lived at the Bates Motel, which seems Or at to least be has taken up residence there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the place seemed to be abandoned, and she was like, uh, well, why wouldn't I live here? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Alex runs into uh, that woman wearing a chicken costume. And yep, <laughs> and her name a... just so happens to be Willie, and she looks like, uh, 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 she looks like she could have come straight out of West Side Story, because... Uh, because <laughs> Uh, because she is very um, rude, uh, 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 to, uh, to be honest, and uh, uh, be, uh, because you know she, she didn't expect anyone to show up. You know, uh, she'd been uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it called when, uh, when so, uh, someone uh, she was. Not exactly house sitting, but uh, but she was uh, um, there, probably not uh, not for all the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, in all honesty, I didn't mind her attitude. I actually appreciate people being brutally honest. At least when they are like that, I know they won't lie to me. <laughs> Well, and after a little bit, he shows her that he is the, the new owner, and he basically kicks her out, and, and, and he ends up uh, going and trying to apply for a loan. Um, and the lo oh, one thing I wanted to uh, to mention is that uh, uh, Doctor Goodman, uh, he was play uh, played by Robert Picardo, who. Oh, yeah. um, I happen to uh, uh, know as the computer hologram of uh, of a doctor on uh, Star Tr uh, Star Trek uh, Voyager. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but he's been in a whole heck of a lot uh, 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 too. I mean, uh, he played in the Atlas Shrug um, st uh, 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 stuff. I mean. He's been, he's been in a movie called Time Machine Rise of the Morlocks, or was called Mor uh, Morlocks, uh, a, ver a, a version of the Time Machine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, so I um, I tend to like him as an a actor, and uh, him being. That do uh, doctor, that was kind of in interesting. Um, but the guy who um, he got the loan from, uh, uh, from, he's been in a whole heck of a lot. And, uh, 
he uh, he often uh, um, takes and uh, ah his na name was Tom Fuller if I remember correctly. Yes, played by Greg Henry, and Greg Hen Henry play had played Grandpa in Guardians of the Galaxy, Val Resnick in Payback, uh, Jack McCready in Slither. Uh, Sam in body du a double and so on and so forth uh, for, uh, forth so he's really been in a, in a whole heck of a lot too so you, you kind of have a little bit of a stellar cast in this uh, uh, TV uh, so-called TV movie <laughs> what did you think about mr. Fuller well I definitely must say, well, spoiler alert, uh, uh, I definitely must say I didn't uh, expect things uh, with his character to turn out the way they did. Uh, I didn't expect him to be behind uh, the haunting. Uh, uh, and uh, before that happened, well, he seemed to be an okay character, an average businessman who seems to be like uh, all focused on the practical aspect of things, on business generally. But uh, yeah, it was pretty surprising when his real agenda was revealed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just going to take a moment here and uh we're gonna check out the original trailer and oh. uh, 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 uh here uh so uh um and then you can tell me what if you had just seen this trailer uh what would you have thought about it oh let's see after the death of norman the motel has been taken over by a new owner who doesn't know what he's let himself in for. Strange things are bound to happen. Bates Motel is a chilling supernatural thriller. It's 27 years later. I, Norman Bates, being of sound mind, knowing the history of that place, I'd be out of there at the first full moon. Bates Motel has come back to life. Look at that crazy. And history will repeat itself. Like most people, they don't go around seeing stuff that's not there. One more time. What are you doing here? One last time. <laughs> Bates Motel. <laughs> Uh, it's definitely interesting how misleading this trailer is, uh, evidently on purpose. <laughs> if <laughs> I had seen uh, this trailer before watching the movie, well, I would definitely be surprised because uh, this trailer implies there are supernatural things going on. Well, there is something supernatural going on, but not... Uh, what the trailer implies, so I would uh, correct because uh, uh, ultimately, Ellie, um, Alex ends up uh, talking Henry Watson down um, a after the, the, they thre uh, threaten to evict him from his own place, and so Alex offers him a contracting job, especially as, as, as since. Uh, the contractor or architect uh, that he was trying to go with before uh, evidently might have been trying to, you know, be a little scrupulous, uh, scrupulous which is what uh, what uh, Willie had uh, implied when she had st stuck up for him, uh, for him, I guess, um, while sticking around, gave her a reason to come back and have a home again, but. Uh, ultimately she was she was trying to uh be a friend uh, i guess 
So, um, even if she is, she was a uh, foolhardy friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the trailer definitely do, uh, uh, do, uh, does give that supernatural intent that. Uh, may uh, may uh, maybe Norman might be back or something like that. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it, uh, uh, or maybe I'm just uh, influenced by already knowing the story. But it uh, look it looks like it's his mother that's uh, haunting the place. <laughs> and if I had seen the trailer before seeing the movie, I would. Uh, I would have actually been surprised by the idea of them taking the story in that direction since other psycho movies actually don't have anything supernatural to them. It's uh, just a psychological story. So uh, I would have been surprised at the idea of things uh, going in this direction. But then it turns out it's... Uh, Yet something uh, different in its own way. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, mm. because uh, once he puts uh, Henry to uh, uh, being the constructor, uh, everything starts to um, shape into w what he wants in a hotel uh, uh, or a motel, uh, uh, so to speak. Although the bodies uh, 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 that keep showing up are kind of expected. I mean, uh, they never did find the body of his mother, so when they unearthed his mother, <laughs> well, uh, Norman's mother. Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, one thing that didn't make sense to me regarding that is uh, I clearly remember in the first movie her body was found in the basement, which was the shocking moment when we find out that uh, Norman's mother has been dead all along and that he was the one dressing up like her and killing. Very true. Uh, uh, but I guess in this particular universe, her body was never found. So... <laughs> yeah, or maybe... Uh, which, or maybe... Which has yes. something to do with continuity. If if I had done an exact sequel, I might have actually gone off on the fact that maybe, you know, uh, 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 even though her body was found in the very uh, uh, in the end of the original film, um. How would I connect this uh, that to the sequel? You know, in in, in a way that almost makes the sequel like its own entity, like its own animal, uh, because well, it, 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 it's trying to be a sequel, and yet it it doesn't really follow the event uh, 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 the events entirely, you know? Maybe, yeah, although uh, I have a theory about this, uh, like, since... Uh, the whole thing was, uh, uh, since the whole thing with the dead bodies and the supposed uh, haunting and stuff, it was all uh, actually uh, a sabotage. So maybe this guy Tom uh, uh, dug her body out and placed it there for them to find it and to uh, uh, steer some drama and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Ultimately, we uh, also we have not only the body of uh, the mother uh, is unearthed, but also the body of Norman's father is unearthed. Yes, and shortly after that, Norman uh, gets um, several images. Uh, well. First, he gets uh, uh, a woman in, uh, dressed in black at the uh, at the funeral, and nobody else sees this but him. And also, he keeps seeing a shape at the window, and he ends up seeing what he thinks is Jack's body with a knife 
sticking out. <laughs> and it's at this point that, uh, that, uh, that Willie um, starts to, you know, have this inkling that somebody is actually messing with him. Either, or it could be a ghost. <laughs> but I, 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 I would like to think that it, it's the latter. So, so they set up a trap eventually uh, down the road. But that's not before, um, apparently, uh, the hotel, the motel, uh, has its opening day. And apparently... He owes ten thousand uh, dollars the next day, so he's <laughs> got to come up with a whole heck of a lot of money by then, and he's not sure how he he will do that. And so he opens up the motel and <laughs> greetings. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. No. Uh, Th uh, there's uh, someone from Colorado uh, uh, from music film t uh, uh, TV. So thank you for listening. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in any case, so now that he's opened up the hotel or motel or uh, whatever you want to call it, um, he gets the, his first guest. Uh, why don't you tell us about that first guest here? <laughs> well, it's a character who somehow ends up getting uh, uh, her own story arc. Like there is, uh, there is one whole part of the movie where we are, uh, uh, where the, uh, the movie is focused entirely on her and. Uh, Alex and Willie barely appear in that part. Uh, it's this woman named uh, Sally who shows up there with a uh, fake identity. At first, I didn't fully understand why, but it uh, turns out that she was there. Uh, uh, she came there in order to uh, commit suicide, but uh, she is uh, stopped by... Uh, a, a girl who actually turns out to be a real ghost, although a benevolent one. Uh, mm. Well, apparently the character is uh, Barbara Peters, uh, who was played by Carrie Keene. And uh, she passes herself off as um, a writer of aerobics or uh, 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 what, what not. And uh, what do you think about um, Alex West's um, hosting capabilities uh, uh, when she first initially arrive, arrives to the office? Um, I, I thought that he was very pleasant and, uh, and I think uh, because he was nervous about his first night, he was overly, overly animated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess maybe when someone did show up, maybe it was some sort of relief to him. So he, uh, maybe that was why he was uh, uh, more cheerful when the first guest showed up. <laughs> well... Ultimately, she uh, uh, appeared uh, that uh, that she was writing letters to like all the people that, uh, uh, well, not letters, uh, uh, postcards. Uh, po yeah, postcards to all the people that she uh, she was going to say that she was sorry for, and uh, she got undressed. Um, went over to the, uh, 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 guess got in the tub and she had this straight razor blade that uh, she ha had and she was just about to off herself when like you said Sally um, uh, a girl that was dressed up in 1950s uh, 
rock and roll type, uh, um, you know, uh, the girl from high school in the 1950s. <laughs> and uh, apparently there was a party going on next door. So uh, so she wanted to get her up and go, uh, uh, go uh, going and um though she was old uh, uh, she is an older woman she was also really beautiful so, uh, so yeah um she, but she thought that she was not and so she was against going over what uh, what did you think about that reaction uh, well i guess uh uh, to some extent, it uh, makes sense after all her experiences, uh, but uh, then again, uh, uh, then again, it uh, makes uh, it makes us wonder. Like uh, from what we got to know, she had three marriages that went wrong, and that was why she wanted to end her life. And I'm like. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, why would that uh, be a reason to end your life? Like, uh, 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 who, uh, it's never really too late to find your soulmate, but then again, even if you don't, there are still uh, other things you can have in your life that are worth living for. It's not like you necessarily have to uh, get married in order to have... Uh, uh, successful and fulfilled life uh, that uh, uh, I mean what happened to her maybe is bad but it's definitely not a reason to uh, think of what she wanted to do I thought this was a real interesting segment in the uh, f uh, film and this was uh, where uh, uh, where I thought that it was really cool uh, uh, because uh, it's almost kind of like a a public service announcement uh, announcement against suicide uh, mm. uh, uh, because you it, it, you get this whole scenario where she's invited to this party just to get out of her sl uh, uh, slums and um, she meets this boy I mean and He's really young, may even remind her of like her first high school experience or even her own prom. And, you know, is, is she, she is very nervous about, uh, about being that old and um, that experienced around someone so young. And she doesn't want to be the person to let him down, you know, you know, so that is kind of why she uh, walks away from the situation and tries to let him down easy. But just that he's young and, and uh, he's sensitive. Uh, but she also doesn't realize that he will never be uh, never be able to live the life that she is able to leave uh, or lead. And ultimately when, uh, when she goes back to, you know, her room and Sarah tells her what she's all about, that she, she actually killed herself 25 years ago, exact same night, exact same time. And she, uh, she tells her all of us, uh, have come to tell you that we've all, you know, killed ourselves. And when they go uh, through and t uh, tell each other's names and when they died, that's it's kind of like a moment where where you kind of have to th uh, think for a moment uh, because because. Uh, these people are uh, are telling her exactly when they d uh, died, and you're looking at them at how young they really are, you know, and how tragic it might must have been for them to have, you know, off themselves. 
and there's a lot of that that goes uh, uh, goes on out there uh, there uh, there in the world today. So uh, so you know seeing uh, seeing these young folks here, um, all dressed up, looking their best in these 1950s you know uniform uh, forms. It's kind of a tragic scene. So what do you think? Yeah, definitely. That was. Uh... Uh, very impacting, and uh, 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 I also, well, okay, I don't know what things were like in uh, the uh, late 80s, I don't know if, uh, how, uh, uh, how, uh, how do I say it, I don't know how high the suicide rate was, uh, and uh, if the people were really trying to raise awareness about it at the time or not, but it definitely did feel like this part of the movie was uh, to uh, raise awareness about suicide. Uh, although uh, one issue I have with this part of the story is that uh, there is uh, this whole part where that guy told you seems to express some romantic feelings for this woman and it's uh, apparently a part of trying to stop her from committing suicide but uh, that in turn left me wondering what if she ended up developing some feelings for him too and then found out that he was a ghost and that she couldn't she, be with him she kind of did i mean when she realized that um that he was one of them, or one of the one of the kids that was uh, 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 telling, and that was a very young Jason Bateman. There, um, he he, uh, if you've seen anything uh, uh, th uh, th uh, thing with him in it, he kind of reminds me of like Ewan McGregor as an actor. To, uh, uh, they're very similar in mm -hmm. in acting acting or what uh, what not. If you look at his uh, his Face, uh, face in uh, in a recent uh, of, of film. I think uh, I saw him in in a switch a switch movie re recently, uh, Ooh, where where yeah. he ends up switching yeah. bodies with someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's but, see. Uh, yes, but. He really is a teenager in this uh, uh, film, um, and he's still got his ba his baby face dimples. So um, <laughs> it was it was pretty cool to see, uh, see a young Jason Bateman in, in in that particular role, and I guess that particular fantasy, uh, so uh, so to speak. So it was amusing. Uh, 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 to say the least, and I am kind of glad that uh, you know she ended up um, walking away from uh, 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 there and not ultimately, you know, offing herself. Mm, um, and uh, she definitely seemed to uh, to have a pleasant stay at the Bates Motel. So surprisingly, <laughs> um. What did you think about the entrapment uh, that uh, they involved with finding out uh, who was actually involved with uh, um, uh, well, bothering Alex West? Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, I was uh, very surprised to see a Scooby-Doo scenario in this kind of movie. And uh, yeah, what they did to the guy was definitely clever, but also I must say it was uh, very convenient for Alex that uh, the guy he was in debt with uh, had a, a fishy agenda because uh, uh, what Tom was trying to do was uh, what made they what made them able to. Uh, force him to give them more time to uh, pay off the debt uh, 
but uh, if he was a decent guy, then uh, they would have really been in trouble because they wouldn't have made enough money by the time when uh, Alex has to pay. So, and ultimately, uh, but Cor uh, Court's char uh, character ended up having more confidence at the end too. Um, uh, once you know everything was all said and uh, said and done, I mean. Uh, his his night of uh, uh, opening was a success as as far as his mind uh, mind was concerned, and it, it looked like a pretty decent motel. What do you think? Definitely, yeah. Would uh, you stay there? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Uh, I, I would too. I mean, I mean, I I would love to stay in the basement hotel. It, it's kind of an iconic location too. I mean, mm. uh, uh, no matter which uh, film it, it it's it, it, in, I kind of want I want to uh, one of the these days if I could uh, could spend the night and, be, uh, and see if I'll be uh, uh, I'll be hearing uh, Norma's uh, voice saying, Norman. It, you forgot to t put the toilet seat down again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I love your impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, I guess. Uh, um, they said that they would stay there too. So, uh, so I guess we uh, we have a th a, a, a third person. Uh, uh, saying that they would definitely stay there. So, uh, um, but uh, in any case, um, what did you think about the uh, the ending where he was actually um, he was he 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 actually sp uh, spoke in the third um, in the third person um, uh, where he was actually speaking to the television audience. Uh, what did you think about that? Uh, uh, he broke a barrier there. Uh, what did you th <laughs> what, what did you think about that? Yeah, it was a bit of a break in the fourth wall scene, as they say. Uh, well, it was pretty cool and uh, also uh, a rather decent ending since the movie was uh, actually a comedy in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you find funny about the film? Uh, Oh, well, many things. It uh, it actually had its uh, fair share of funny moments, uh, like from uh, uh, Norman leaving a turkey to an old lady to all the stuff happening at the motel, uh, the haunting <laughs> turning out to be a, a rather earthly kind of sabotage. And uh, uh, there are many funny interactions among characters and the whole thing with Willie and her chicken costume. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was definitely kind of funny when she kind of took the chicken head off and you realized <laughs> that there was a person underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, right. it's not just us chickens, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in any case, um, yeah, good thing Alex didn't chicken out, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was thinking that, but then he was pure turkey in the end. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, ultimately, what was your favorite scene in the film? <laughs> My favorite scene. Uh, well, actually, I had uh, uh, I had a lot of uh, moments of good laugh uh, with this movie. So it's difficult to pick only one. But if I think about it a bit, uh, oh, well. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe the ending where we uh, uh, discover the truth about the haunting and uh, uh, the part where both Tom uh, uh, dressed up like Norman's mother and uh, Willie too in order to uh, uh, 
in order to trick Tau, that was a, a rather clever way to put things together. But uh, aside from that, who? Mm. Well, I, uh, I don't know, it's really difficult to pick only one scene, but uh, all of it was funny also. the. Uh, uh, moment at the uh, uh, bus stop, uh, at least I think it was a bus stop when that guy thought uh, the Asher was a bottle of drink or something like that. I think that my mm. favorite moment will probably be, uh, be the whole 1950s scenario because uh, to me the 1950s is kind of like a trap moment in time. It will never be like it was in the 50s ever again and it, it, it was a time period where a lot of people could like listen to uh, to, uh, to music uh dance have some fun uh, fun and um you could actually go out to like drive-in movies uh <laughs> i've I've actually been to a couple of drive-in films myself back when they, they had some here in Milwaukee until they developed it into some kind of a business and shut it down. But, oh. um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. I saw The Lion King at the drive-in, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I, and behind us was playing Jim Carrey's The Mask. So um, I remember moments like th uh, th uh, that. And t uh, to me, um, seeing the, uh, uh, the, uh, that whole scenario where the kids are just talking about, uh, about I died uh, uh, Saturday the 1st, 1989, you know, uh, uh, no, that's, I, I almost wonder if uh, some of those names were actually real. Huh, oh, I didn't think about it, but it would be worth looking up. That's awesome. Uh, apparently, uh, Music Film TV says that uh, there's actually some drive-in theaters still in his home state of Texas. Um, I think um, there's one supposedly still out in Kenosha, because I'm from Milwaukee, um, uh, but supposedly there's still one out in kenosha and then there's one i've heard that's still out in oshkosh um somewhere up that way but uh, but they're few and far between here so it's uh it's definitely an interesting time period and i think that's why i like that segment of the film um what do we think about the mu uh, uh, music of, of the film um trying to no, I, I, now that you say it i did like the music in that part of the story <laughs> the music was uh put together by j peter robinson and and he has been uh, he was the composer behind wayne's world cocktail uh Wes craven's new nightmare the world's fastest in the end uh, just to state a few um and identity theft um don't look down firestorm kindred the embrace the uh, the tv series generation x the movies so um vampire in brooklyn the omen tv uh, 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 tv movie from 1995 Ooh. But um, in any case, um, as far as the soundtrack uh, goes, I'm just going to see if there's... Okay. So this film was uh, filmed in California, just so you know. Oh, cool. But um, where or when was uh, was the song performed by Dion and the Belmonts uh, that, that was playing in the 1950s uh, scenario? 
So that was the song that Sally said something about. Uh, about. <laughs> but other than that, um, did you have anything else that she wanted to add about this film that you might have enjoyed? Uh, well, I think I did mention most of the funny moments in the movie, uh, except maybe when Alex was uh, trying to get someone to tell him how to find the mate motel and uh, uh, that uh, lady on the other side of the phone or whatever oh. that thing is called in English and she thought he was ordering food. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, next car, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't even have a car. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you can't even do that anymore. You can't even just walk up to, uh, to a, uh, to a drive through and be like, can I take an order? You actually have to be in a vehicle. I know I work for fast food. So, <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, well, thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our, uh, our uh, discussion so far. It's yeah, more our preamble and video journeys as we uh, continue next week, um, probably around the same time we will be going on about psycho the remake so uh, oh. so and uh definitely going to be checking that f uh, f uh, film out to see what differences there were about the film and what, uh, what were the same so uh, that will be interesting <laughs> oh yeah most assuredly and then i think we're going to uh, get back into our i spit on your grave uh, fr uh, franchise so uh, stay tuned for more exciting film journeys ladies and gentlemen and uh, uh, thank you uh, music film TV for checking us out and yeah giving us thank you so much <laughs> um, and uh, maybe uh, you can join us next week so in any case Definitely. Uh, stay tuned for some more cool stuff so thank you for listening have a great day evening and morning wherever you are appreciate your uh, time here spent on our page so and ch uh, channel so like share and subscribe and have at you just go watch the film it's uh it's pretty fun definitely <laughs>